Guild. I call to order the regular meeting of the Board of Education, January 25th, 2017. All stand, please, for the pledge to the flag. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our mission statement. You can all say it along with me if you wish. I'm sure you've memorized it. We are committed to academic achievement and success for all students in a safe environment. In partnership with families and our community, our mission is to promote confidence, inspire a passion for learning, and prepare our students to become responsible global citizens. Do I have a motion to approve the revised agenda? Motion. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Um, so carried. I want to mention that the artwork here tonight hung around on the trifles um, are, was, was created by Smith Clove Elementary School students. There's always a changing gallery here in this room. Um, I would like to read a memorial resolution. Unanimously adopted by the Monroe Woodbury Board of Education at its regular meeting on Wednesday, January 25th, 2017. Whereas Mrs. Deborah Perez was employed by the Monroe Woodbury Central School District, and whereas through her dedication to the district, Deborah has touched the lives of many individuals in our district. It is hereby resolved the Board of Education, on behalf of the entire district, extends in memoriam its appreciation and gratitude as well as its sincere condolence to the Perez family. It is hereby resolved and approved that the flag at the Education Center will be flown at half staff on Thursday, January 26, 2017. As the above resolution is adopted by the board, it will become part of the official historical records of the district and will serve as a memorial lasting for all time. Um, do we have any questions or comments from interested citizens? Do we have any questions or comments from uninterested <laughs> citizens? Neither. No. Um, do I, I have a motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting of December 14th, 2016, and the minutes of the special meeting of December 23rd, 2016. Motion. Second. Second. It's a race. It's a race to get through. You, you, you people have to, you have to be it's quick to beat Beeler. Absolutely. In everything. <laughs> in, 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 in everything. Is there, are, are there any uh, comments or questions? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, the motion carries. Something happened in the past week, and we would like to talk about it. And Mrs. Nicole Reagan will talk about it, eh, about the national music competition of which we are all knowledgeable and extremely proud. Thank you. I actually brought two students with me this evening and they're going to speak while you watch a slideshow of the events that we participated in this weekend. So we probably need the lights to be at least half dim. This yeah, is the front part, wrong. <laughs> So this is Natalie, she's in our chamber orchestra, and Catherine, who is in both our voice ensemble and our um, wind ensemble. All right, here we go. All right, so as you all know, we took a trip to Washington, D.C. Uh, last week, um, which we're lucky enough to go on a trip every two years, thanks to you, so thank you so much for that. And if you listen in the background, that's actually our wind ensemble playing. They are that good. <laughs> So on Thursday morning, we set off for D.C., um, and we made a pit stop at the Baltimore Harbor, um, which is a really popular tourist destination. 
Um, and we had a really nice time there. People explored restaurants, you know, shops there, museums like Ripley's. Um, it was a nice day, so we took some walks around the harbor. Uh, just an overall great time. And then after that, we set off to D.C. So we arrived at night and had a dinner as an ensemble and group and got right for the next morning, which was inauguration, which was a really just surreal experience to be a part of history and to be a part of something you see on the television, but being able to witness it and be in its presence and be you know, a thousand yards away from you know president being sworn in. Um, and that's an experience that I think everybody will remember for a long time. And if you see, I think we're really adorable in our matching hats <laughs> and I personally love that. <laughs> so that night we had dinner again as a group and got ready for the next day, which was our big day, competition day. Um, Chamber Orchestra went first, and I think we did an amazing job. Um, it was really great to see our hard work since September pay off. Um, and I think we're just really proud of ourselves. We got to play in this beautiful, beautiful concert hall. Um, and have a short workshop with the judge afterward. Um, and I loved it. I think everybody else did too. So from the Chamber Orchestra, from me and my cello section, thank you so much <laughs> to the Board of Ed, um, to our administrators and our music teachers. And the next group that got to perform was Wind Ensemble. Um, it was, we got to perform in the same beautiful concert hall and it was such a great experience and I think the judges really appreciated our performance. They barely had any suggestions for us. It was, it was really, really surreal to be there. And from that we moved on to the voice ensemble performance in a different, um, in a different location. And it was, it was, it was really great and we, it, we were grateful to have um, Mr. Castro with us for the entire thing and to have the administration support with all of this. <laughs> um, and so that evening we had our awards dinner. Um, it was just great to have all the gr performing groups together in one location and receive all these awards. So Voice Ensemble won gold, Wind Ensemble won gold, and Chamber Orchestra won gold. Wow, it was that's impressive. So, and we also won the best overall chorus and orchestra and band. So it was really just surreal. Um, and more awards. <laughs> so we had the best combined instrumental or, um, score and the choral score and the highest instrumental score of all. And then the highest of everything. Everything. So, everything. <laughs> and we invite anyone next year? Yeah. Um, and uh, you there was a photo, um, a bunch of our soloists actually won individual awards for their performances. So that was, we had four soloists that won that, which was really great. And then Sunday, we got to head on home on the buses for the long ride home. And in a second, you can see, we're trying to find room to laugh. <laughs> 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 but it was, it, it was a really, really great experience to be able to share our music and it was really fun. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. The, the one comment I want to say, uh, well, there's two. The judges came up to me after to make sure that I went back to you to thank you for everything because they do this for a lifetime. This is what they do. They go around and they said this was one of the best performances that they have ever heard in their careers and they wanted to make sure that you understood that it was being appreciated and heard. And also at the awards ceremony, some of the students came up to me and said, the other groups think we're a private performing arts school. <laughs> <laughs> and they got a, a, a big kick out of telling them, no, we're public education. This is what public education can do for us. So thank you for everything. And you can rewatch the video all that you want. It's up on the web. <laughs> thank Great. you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Uh, Bill, are you, do you have people building the necessary cabinetry for the awards? I don't know if we have enough. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's an embarrassment of riches and well-deserved, but just the same, you know. I never got anything like that for not being able to make junior, junior varsity baseball in high school. Um, I mean, the, the, the awards are wonderful. The, uh, I, 
I just want to say something. I mean, you say this is what public schools can do, and this is indeed what public schools can do, and this is what our public schools can do. You do not build well-rounded human beings with reading, writing, and arithmetic alone. You build them with giving them opportunities from athletics to music to drama to art. Something will spark them. Something will spark their curiosity and get them moving, if they already aren't, in a direction that will be fulfilling in their lives. So I want to thank you and everybody in all of the arts that contributes to the education here in Monroe Woodbury. You do a superb job, and I thank you. Um, unfortunately, Julie Primack is going to leave us, um, who has done such a wonderful job uh, leading the art department for all these years. But we will, we will, we will shoulder on. So, thank you. Um, this, uh, reports by the Board of Education Committees. Do we have anything, Chris? Uh, policy, policy committees. Uh, we have had two meetings already since January. <laughs> We've discussed a bunch of policies concerning uh, discrimination, equal opportunity, uh, wellness, uh, the transportation. Uh, in transportation, we're looking at zero tolerance concerning drugs and alcohol, keeping up with uh, the state's guidelines. We're also uh, including the bus routes and bus stops uh, through the district. Uh, just today, we were given this big packet uh, from NISBA. It's 4,000 series to start looking at it. Uh, it contains a lot of policies from curriculum, instruction, uh, resource guideline programs, academic achievements, all with very numerous subcategories underneath it. Uh, so we're going to be busy for a while. Uh, I should I say, Mr. Hassler, you'll be busy. Thanks a lot. Uh, <laughs> our next meeting so far is on the 15th. Um, if we get some of the answers back from NISBA and the state on the things we've asked them in the, from the last two meetings, we might try to squeeze one in before there to get some of the things done. Uh, hopefully, by the next board meeting, uh, we'll have a, uh, a first reading of at least the first three that we discussed. So. Right. Thank you. Moving on. Thank you. Don, anything new on facilities? Uh, yes. Frank, uh, Frank and I attended a, a session today up in Valley Central that was talking about making sure the planning for facilities for safety uh, going forward was good. Um, the reality is Frank shows up to give most of the instruction to the rest of the school. So it's, uh, it's always interesting to watch him uh, Watch him perform. Everybody, every question goes to. They all look to Frank to make sure that they're saying the right thing. Um, but I, I think uh, Patrick has some other specific updates that have happened since our last meeting. Uh, yeah, just a, a few items. We, uh, as a committee, had agreed to move forward with the field study. Uh, this is a study of the um, the campus uh, with the high school, middle school CV. We're going to look at the layout of the fields, configuration of the facilities, and that'll help us with the long range uh, plan also help us with the exit 131 uh, assessment, you know, assessing the impact on the fields and the building and in negotiations potentially with, uh, with DOT. Um, we, from the committee, got some direction from the committee to look at our field usage and, and really quantify what fields are being used and compare that on an annual basis to a standard. So there are standards out there. And so the idea would be we see where we're overusing fields. I mean, we all kind of intuitively know where that's happening, but we could really measure it. And if we could redirect some usage to underutilized fields, there, there probably aren't too many, um, you know, that would be sort of a good thing. It would also help us assess maybe where we need to rest fields and, um, you know, make some changes in, in the facilities use policy of the district. And finally, a little bit further down in the agenda, we have a resolution for the board to approve an emergency capital project to replace the transformers at Central Valley and Pine Tree. Uh, so this is something the facilities committee discussed with the architect um, you know, a couple of, on a couple of occasions. So the uh, transformers are in imminent failure, was the words uh, used by the architects. Um, it's tough to assess you know, when they really would fail, but there were some, uh, some issues with the transformers and uh, we're gonna move forward with the board's approval and uh, and have that done as quickly as possible. Good. And now the interchange is on fast track. Yes. Correct. What does that mean? That means um, both Patrick and I met with uh, Assemblyman Scoofus last week because we were concerned 
when we heard that the governor had stated that he wanted to fast track this project. Originally, when they presented, they talked about 2018. So I called the DOT and spoke to a gentleman there who said the fast track really meant that they would begin the project somewhere be, somewhere um, between October and November, which was a concern for us. So I shared with them that I had 2017, thank you, 2017, and my concern was that's always the beginning of school. And so imagine having to deal with transportation and all of the changes. So. Um, what we agreed was that we would meet as a school district where we have a meeting scheduled tomorrow with the administrators, some of the building administrators, to talk about, and transportation, what are our concerns, <coughs> knowing that this project has now been fast-tracked by the governor, so that then we would have a subsequent meeting with the DOT. And that's really where we are. And we're also waiting for our architectural firm, which I believe is, LAN is going to be doing some sort of a, um, a survey. Yeah. And, yeah, and yeah. take a look at the property and see what else. Um, I think one of the issues that they have, or they continue to send a letter to the school, um, referring back to the 2009 resolution where the board agreed. And my argument to them is that that was agreed in 2009, but now this is 2017 and things have changed. So we've been going a, 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 a back and forth a bit. I did meet with Assemblyman Skoufis to share with him my concerns and that you know although the board had agreed in 2009, a lot has happened since then. So he said that he would be meeting with them as well, and he would be giving, you know, he would be sharing my concerns. So we have several meetings um, going forward. But, but for the public to know that this board has not made any agreements on anything, we are still looking at, you know, what they're proposing to us, and we're still going through all of the issues. And although this may look like we're taking a, lo a lot of time, this takes a lot of time. This is not a decision that we're going to agree to um, without doing our due diligence. So just wanting to let everybody know that we, I've met with Assemblyman Scoofus. We have another meeting follow, uh, with the DOT. And we have land taking a look at the survey and, and also telling us assessing the property and what can be done. So there's a lot of work on that. And, and a direct result is we had to fast track the uh, topology correct. of the field. That's correct. Because okay. that's another issue that we wanted to discuss. So. The, the one thing I, I do want to kind of go back to what Patrick said, when we, and, and this is important for the public to understand, you know, we've been looking at our field use and, it, and it, it's puzzling at times because it seems like our fields are always in disrepair. And just to give some statistics that help put this in perspective, a turf field is supposed to be used, I believe, a maximum of 600 hours per year. Um, we're allowing them to be used way more than that. So the idea is if you use them way more than that, no matter how much money you put into a turf field, it, it won't look good. Grass. 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 Sorry, grass. Natural, um, turf. natural, natural, natural turf. turf. Natural turf. Um, a, a, a turf field, on the other hand, I think it's 26 or 2,800 hours of playtime versus 600. So part of the assessment um, is looking at do we have enough fields to accommodate all of it, and there's a very real probability that certain fields will not be available to be played on in the next, in, in this coming spring. And that's part of the assessment. But it is important for the public to understand that there is rationale behind it, but they may get pushback in saying that field is not available because what what we've learned is we just can't use it more than 600 hours per, per year or our fields will look like they do now most of the time. <laughs> All right, that's it. Our report from our student representative, Daniel Willis. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening, Daniel. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh. All righties. So. We'll just jump right into it. So uh, this month was an exciting month for the student body. Uh, a lot of cool things got accomplished, and uh, I guess we'll just share the accomplishments. So Sapphire update. Got a chance to go to Sapphire today with Miss Brock. It was a wonderful time. I got a chance to see a couple of students named Zoe, Nyla, Moana. And at this age, the only thing I really care about is when I go in there and ask questions is to make sure that they love school. Everything that they're doing is they're just doing it for fun, and they just love everything they're doing. I asked, I asked them, do they like Sapphire? fire this much or this much and all of them just put their arms out as wide as they could and just said that much and that just kind of 
made my heart just go like, oh, we're doing something right, which is awesome. Uh, I got a chance to talk to other students, uh, MJ, Aurora, Lindsay, Ever and Everly. And they said they love school. They love playing hopscotch, making snowballs and snow angels when they're allowed to go outside. And then also had a very intelligent conversation with a, uh, Joe, Brandon, Isabella, and Veronica. But please call her Nikki, not Veronica. She likes Nikki. And they talked about how uh, vibrations and sounds that they're learning about in science. And that also Brandon told me about the journals that their teachers are having them do to talk about what they did yesterday uh, when there was a snow day. And uh, they also talked about how every Friday a dog named Baron comes into their class and they get a chance to read with him. Uh, they get a chance to read to him. I'm not sure how receptive Baron is, but I heard that he sits there like a good boy and listens to the story. Uh, and that just makes it awesome seeing their smiles on their faces when they say that uh, talk when they talk about Baron. Uh, the next one is Smith Clove. Smith Clove, I just love going to the elementary schools, especially with the first graders. Uh, I had a chance to meet with Polly, Holly, Evie, and X-Man. His name is Xavier. Uh, and they all talked about the <laughs> cool things they did. They, uh, Polly talked about a holiday party that all their teachers had. Uh, and that they're talking about trying to get their class buckets filled. Not sure if that rings a bell to any of the board members. But what the class buckets are, is this an example of what Sapphire has up when you first walk in? And it's uh, started with a... Uh, started with a book that call, it's called Have You Filled Your Bucket? And it's where students are handed out tickets to fill their bucket by any staff member in the whole entire school. And uh, the whole goal is to fill their whole entire bucket up full as a class for, by doing good deeds, just by being a nice person to other people. And if they do fill their bucket, then they get a nice cool party at the end for their class. Uh, this was brought initially by Ms. Rickard, uh, who's kind of leading the whole charge on this uh, to make Red Grammar, uh, having Red Grammar perform to all the elementary schools. And now uh, he's going to be performing for a community concert, which uh, will forward to go into. And the next one is whoops, Central Valley. Mm -hmm. Central Valley update. I just Central Valley, like I said, my alma mater. Uh, <laughs> they're just always a great school to go to. I had a chance to talk to Mr. Barone, get an update on CV. Uh, and when I talk to students there, their faces just light up every single time they talk about their teacher trying a new way to uh, make them receptive to learn and trying uh, how the fifth graders have fifth grade advisory led by Mr. Barone to have the fifth graders have a voice within the school and uh, they feel that they can actually go out and change stuff that they want to, which is awesome. And now North Main with Mr. Cotto. That was an awesome time today, too. Uh, I met with a lot of different uh, individuals, two fourth graders named Ella and Jack with Mr. Elser as their teacher, and two fifth graders, John and Sophia, with Ms. Shortall. Ms. Shortall? I just butchered her name. Uh, and so Sophia mentioned how she loves how interactive her teachers became, how they're trying new things to get them involved within the classroom, how it's not just sit down and uh, write what I'm putting on the board. It's hands-on learning, and they just love that. Uh, they said that their favorite subjects were recess, lunch, math, social studies, reading, and after I told Ella that you dissect a pig in high school, uh, let's just say that science was her wasn't not her favorite subject anymore. Uh, they said that they loved, uh, John told me he loved Computer Club, which Ms. Mr. Elsa teaches them coding, which I don't even know how to code, and they're learning out at such a young age. Uh, they said that they are both in the drama club, Ella and Sophia, and on February 11th, all of us can go and see Beauty and the Beast, which Ella and Sophia are both in. And they agreed that the anti-bullying anti program is doing wonders in North Maine. Uh, John actually told me an instance where he actually stepped up to uh, stop a bullying situation within the school. And that just uh, is a testament to the staff and uh, building administration that instills that confidence in every single student. Uh, and they also talked about the uh, garden that they have that's run by Miss Opelt and the Environment Club. And uh, they wanted me to also mention that they had the first garden in the district and that uh, Pine Tree just uh, <laughs> copied their idea. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they also uh, they also told me they also told me that uh, about a coin challenge they're involved in. Not sure if any of you heard this. That each class has a jar, and that the point is to put pennies in there, and all the pennies build up your class value. And any coins that are silver takes away the value. At the end of the day, they raised over two thousand dollars just with coins, and all that money is going to help the local families, the North Main families that uh, might need extra a couple extra uh, maybe extra funds at the end of the month to help with uh, food, uh, clothing for their children, which I just find uh, uh, beautiful. Next one is Pine Tree. Uh, I got a chance to meet with Reese, Madison, Faith, 
Madeline, Jackson, Desiree, Bella, and Nick, and Brandon also. And that's, I just, I don't know why, I just get in there and I think like I'm talking to 30 year olds. Uh, I know Mr. Jadis can vouch for that, when, especially when I'm talking to a young man named Brandon with the first words out of his mouth when I asked him what we could change in the district. He says, we are hurrying every single student through the educational system and we need to invest in digitizing the computers for education for all students. I said, hold on, what did you just say? Uh, so the, this is the type, this is the caliber of conversations that we had. Uh, one of the greatest ideas that we talked about today was having fifth, outgoing fifth graders making a wall uh, they're going to be uh, possibly like building a wall, not the wall everyone thinks they're going to build, but like a, but a wall that uh, outgoing fifth graders will put positive messages on so that when the incoming second graders come in, uh, they can walk past the wall of just positive messages every single day so they don't feel too frightened to come into school every day, which I just find that's wonderful and just shows how each student really cares about every other student in the building. Uh, the greatest quote that I loved from, that I was told by Brandon, uh, that smart, the very smart, very smart kid, is that every kid has something great. We got to bring it out. And I think that that quote kind of just shows what, why everyone's in this building right now. Everyone has a job. and Because uh, all of us, at the end of the day, our goal is to bring out the best in every single student that we meet, every single student in our district, which is awesome. Middle school update, uh, Mr. Cassidy got a chance to uh, talk with him last month uh, and then also got a chance to talk with a couple of my neighbors who are middle schoolers. And the one thing that I keep seeing that's awesome about it is that the Oveus program, the anti-bullying program, is doing miracles within the district. And that was the thing that they point out in the middle school. The lunches are, uh, are great. The anti-bullying program is just amazing. Uh, with advisory that they do an anti-bullying program every single weekend, it's just people say they feel a difference within the school. And then the high school. High school, as you could tell, we have a, we had a lot of cool things go on in the high school. Everything from, uh, I don't know if you saw, I got a chance to ring the closing bell at the Stock Exchange this past Friday. The music, I didn't know. I lost count after five awards they got. Uh, and then also we had the varsity basketball team beat Newburgh at home. And that was the first time we beat them over 10 years at our home turf, which I think was awesome. And that's... And then we also have a sh uh, highlighting two people today at uh, this meeting. Uh, Mr. Barone, uh, anybody can uh, check out the uh, ballerina flip flops, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Mr. Barone, he has a 22 years as an educator. He has been around the block and got the t shirt. With Sardin in the high school as an assistant principal for A House, he moved up to an admin position from a teacher in Brooklyn because he wanted another challenge. And when, he, when I asked him how he survived 22 years as an educator in the education system, he says a daily dose of vitamins and Brussels sprouts always helps. And and then from meeting with him, he said that his defining moment in education was when his first son was born, and he, his, that changed his whole entire view on how the students uh, need to be nurtured and cared and uh, just make sure that their priorities are put before anyone else's. Uh, when I asked him what his most important job was, he says he's always trying to make sure that everyone's striving to be the best version of, of themselves and also keeping Miss Trelecki in check. Uh, when, when I asked him what he wants to be when he grow, grows up, when, he, when I asked him what he wants to be when he grows up, he said a grandfather, uh, but not too soon, hopefully. Uh, and hopefully he, wanna be, he wants to be doing the same thing he's doing right now, keeping Miss Trelecki in check. And then the next person I highlight is Miss Soda. Uh, I wish Miss Soda. I love Miss Soda. She's just a great woman. Uh, and the quote I just used to describe her is by Winnie the Pooh, you're braver than you believe and stronger than you seem and smarter than you think because every single time Ms. Soto comes into our building every single day and uh, she just talks to students, you get a chance to have a conversation with her. She uh, genuinely cares about you. She wants to know everything about you and she just, every time she you leave talking to her, you she, you always like, get like, a sense of like motivation just feeling that you can go conquer the world and that all happens because Ms. Soto truly cares about every single student within the building. And so what's next? The next biggest project I have, the last slide, is starting a council of other student representatives from the uh, Orange County area. Uh, I filled my whole entire uh, morning today with calling for the all 14 schools within Orange County, calling the superintendents, and I got a response from five of them saying that they did have a student representative on the Board of Ed. So what I did is I provided my information and my goal is to start a kind of a council of student reps on the board within Orange County to one, open a line of communication, because some of these schools had student reps on the board for like 10 years. This is our first one. I could definitely learn something from the other districts. And also attack as a whole group, uh, lack of a better term, attack the schools that don't have a school student on the Board of Ed and kind of tell them, hey, this is what the possibilities are and this is what the successes are. Let's try to get one in your district. And that is my student body report.
John, maybe Thank Trump's you. looking for something to decorate that wall with. We could offer some of the messages <laughs> yeah. that our students are putting on their walls. There yes. you go. Thanks, uh, Daniel. I'm it's too bad you don't throw yourself into this with enthusiasm. <laughs> um, I mean, if it, if, our, job, buddy. if our ta <laughs> if our task is to bring out the best in each student, you uh, you're a you're a good poster person for that, <laughs> shall I say? You're. A, I mean, I thought, well, okay, let's have a student. We we'll, all thought, let's have a student representative. That's a good idea. And I thought, well, you know, the student rep would come up with a laundry list of complaints every, you know, this is what we want in the high school that you guys aren't providing us. Um, I wouldn't mind something like that. But nonetheless, I really appreciate the fact that you're, you throw yourself into this with enthusiasm, with perception, that you meet with everybody, that you find out what is going on in all of the buildings, and that you come back and tell us and the television public um, about this. So thank you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Great job. <clears throat> um, top that. Dr. Hassler <laughs> will follow that with a five-year plan update. Um, Dan, I don't believe it's a coincidence that they put me after you. I think it's definitely an attempt to uh, <laughs> control you. Know, you? It, yes, it's, th there's no way that I can even begin to follow that, Dan. It, it's, it's awesome. Um, so I, I'm I'm here to just update the Board of Ed on the academic piece of the five-year strategic plan update that was provided by the others at the December Board of Education meeting. Uh, just a very quick background: we actually started this process in 2014, 2015, even though this year we've really started the discussion about the district-wide strategic plan. Um, in 2014, 2015, we realized that we needed to start reviewing our academic departments because of the amount of changes that were trickling down from the state education department. So starting last year in 2015, 2016, we reviewed AIS, there was a presentation to the Board of Education. We've had conversations about special education PPS. There was a presentation to the Board about the review of guidance. Instructional technology for our Smart School Bonds Act was done last year. We also have our annual professional development review that takes place. Moving into this year, based upon the discussion about um, having an overall academic, uh, as it was presented in Mrs. Rodriguez's plan, the academic master plan, the AMP, um, we started looking at a variety of other departments in addition to the ones that we started reviewing last year. Um, because of the number of departments, we've, I've had to kind of break it up into chunks because of sort of importance of things that are coming down. This year, the state education department is reviewing standards in both ELA and math. They just before break approved new New York State science standards, and last year they approved brand new social studies standards. So we're really in the core department area starting to develop groups of people, K-12 teams, to start to not only look at the standards, but also look at the things that we are doing as the school district. Beyond the core areas, I've also started um, uh, conversations with John Nowicki in the technology department which is not the same as instructional technology, but he actually um, focuses on the tech classes at the middle school and the high school, 7 through 12. Uh, Lisa Sassy has been working on doing updates for our, nurse, our nursing and health clinic department because we have a nurse's manual that hasn't been updated in quite a few years, so we're updating that based upon state ed regulations to then talk about staffing. Something that we've done recently is looking at the balance of the number of registered nurses that we have in the school district and the number of school nurse teachers and how our health classes are taught by school nurse teachers and registered nurses working in the health clinics. Um, I've had conversations with Lori Hawk who last year as a PE teacher began looking at physical education exclusively at the high school level. We're now looking K-12 as uh, an entire department about the needs of our physical education department. Library and again, science, plus the guidance plan that I spoke about and the, pro the professional development plan that I spoke about are annual reviews that have to take as per state ed reg regulation. Moving forward into next year, my goal is to 
get these committees as they as they exist to function on an annual basis where we're doing a lot of sort of small scale meetings initially where I'm meeting with the teams from the elementary, I met, for example, English language arts, I, met, I have a team of teachers at the elementary level for ELA, I'm meeting with the entire uh, middle school English department and the entire uh, high school English department. My goal is to get everybody on board and have a, a, a K-12 plan aligned by department, so that way annually we have meetings in the fall and a meeting in the spring by representatives from each of these groups to make adjustments in that plan. Um, as I've said in previous board meetings, we used to be on a, a five-year rotating basis of reviews of these various departments and putting the plan on the shelf and then five years down the road updating it and dusting off is really not a, a functional way for us to be able to operate this day and age. So the goal is to gradually chip away at each of the departments to have a living, um, a, a living plan that we're operating from on an annual basis to make annual tweaks and adjustments in that plan based upon the needs of that specific department. So that combined with the new standards that are ultimately going to be released and how that has an impact both on um, curriculum and the, the, the resource needs of and staffing needs of the school district. You, you should also talk about the fact that they have, some of the department chairs at the high school have been reviewing their program of studies and taking a look at some of the programs that they currently <coughs> offer and, you know, deciding whether these programs should continue to be offered at, or offer new programs. So that's also been done. There's been uh, meetings with department chairs, building principal, uh, guidance counselors. I believe, Eric, you've been a part of that. And so has, uh, I think, possibly Harry, even to talk about staffing. What are the implications if in the next two years we plan on changing a program and adding another program? What would that mean for us on multiple levels? And, so. and, and an example, I, I think, specifically that you're speaking about would be you know, every year the Board of Education approves uh, various new textbooks that we're, that we're introducing. And a lot of times those textbooks are needed because maybe we're taking a class and we're shifting it from um, just the high school course credit bearing class to we make tweaks and adjustments in the, um, in the syllabus to align with something that, say, SUNY Albany or SUNY Orange offers, and we can offer it for college credit. But sometimes they require us to use a specific textbook in order to be able to do that. Um, every year I have meetings with various department chairs about different ways and areas that we can do that with. The goal is by department to gradually develop um, a multi-year plan so that we say, okay, year one, here's the courses that we're focusing on. Year two, here's the courses that we're focusing on. I know, um, I don't know whether it was last year or the year before when we did the presentation about the high school regents results, one of the things that I spoke about was um, there was a, a, a bit of a drop in our high school physics region scores. And the reason for that was because we had a pretty sharp increase in the number of students that were taking high school physics. Because we realized that colleges prefer seeing students taking regents level courses rather than electives. So we have students who maybe previously said, you know what, I'm going to pass on physics. I'd rather take you know, meteorology or uh, astronomy or something like that. They'll still get their college credits to be able to graduate by taking that elective, but now it looks better on a high school transcript to take physics. That has an impact long term in terms of the plan of um, you know, the high school science department where they say, you know what, <coughs> our numbers in meteorology might be declining, our numbers in astronomy might be declining, we need to increase the numbers of sections of physics or AP physics. Uh, I had a conversation with John Decker, the science department chair, who said physics is heavily calculus based, but there's also a version of physics that is also algebra based. Mm -hmm. He said we may look to incorporate a physics course that's algebra based rather than exclusively the, the, the calculus based physics that we currently offer. These are the types of things that we hope to flush out in the upcoming years, so that way it's not just hey, we happen to notice this, we're able to weave that into a plan and say, okay, year one, we're going to do this, year two, we're going to do that, year three, and so on. Um, and then, again, just on an annual basis, similar to the overall strategic plan that we're speaking about, we meet in the fall, we meet in the spring to tweak and make adjustments to, you know what, this is what we decided last year, but maybe we were a little too ambitious, or maybe we're not going slow enough, we need to do more courses than we thought because of the shift in student course requests or whatever. Um, 
So it's good work. And one of the things that's changed is that we now have Mr. Villas attending the department chair meetings because we feel that technology has to be incorporated into whatever we're doing. So he's so there's there's a lot more I would say more collaboration going on with the departments in order to make um, an informed decision and how we move forward and talk about this this plan, this long range plan. And so far, th there have been a lot of very positive outcomes to these meetings. Um, one of them is. Um, we've spoken about and, and on the agenda tonight actually later on is a contract with Columbia University Teachers College Writing Project. Um, that's an initiative that we're doing at the K-5 level and we have teams of teachers from the high school that have requested to go down and do observations in the elementary classrooms to see the writer's workshop activities as the teacher is teaching them. And what we've agreed to do is we'll release the high school teachers, we'll release the uh, elementary teacher, the, the high school team will go down, they'll observe the lesson, and then the elementary teacher will be released to debrief with the high school teacher about the model that's being used because ultimately this is the foundation of writing instruction that's being used at the elementary level which is gonna slowly flow upward once the kids are gonna be rolling themselves forward. Um, Again, it's it's a lot of very very positive conversations that are happening. And so you'd implement things that would go, that would migrate up. That's Correct. the whole. As opposed to the Common Core that just went down Correct. on everybody and, at the same time. And and the goal is, I mean, again, you know, the, the Common Core has has sort of come and gone, and the state is in the their their committees are in the process of updating the standards based upon the public comment. They have the draft standards that are on the state ed website, but they plan on presenting the final draft to the Board of Regents sometime in the near future. But our goal is to hopefully create something that, you know, when the state comes down with something, hopefully we are able to make sort of minor adjustments and any right. major changes that take place won't derail us from what we fundamentally Good. establish. So, tricky. Yeah. Yep. Word to be used. You mentioned that um, you'd have like the physics with calculus or physics with something else. Right. I guess that also opens up more doors for students who aren't there like a max mm -hmm. for students that go in some of these classes that are college credits. Correct. And so they're kind of hand standing there with this track from fifth right. grade. Well, and then they get up there and they can remake the class because it's maxed out. And one of the things that we're trying to do is previously a lot of the the courses that have been shifted to either AP courses or college-bearing courses have been for students who are on an accelerated track mm -hmm, where mm -hmm. they've been able to chip away at, say, taking earth science or bio in eighth grade or algebra in eighth grade, and they have that, accept, that um, the, the open places in their schedule to be able to sort of fit that in. We're looking at uh, a lot of different areas to be able to do that, not necessarily targeting just those accelerated kids. For example, um, Jessica Wright, who is the 712 health coordinator, is in conversations with SUNY Orange right now to um, have the first aid and CPR class that's offered as the high school because SUNY Orange offers a three credit first aid CPR course to get our course aligned to the syllabus of mm -hmm. the SUNY Orange course and offer that as a three credit class. So student, any student who takes first aid and CPR as the class in the high school, which is an extremely, extremely popular class in the high school, will be able to graduate with three college credits. Wow. Which is phenomenal. That is. No, no acceleration needed. You know, you don't have to have had you know, biology in eighth grade in order to be able to get into that class. So it's cool stuff. It's great stuff. Thank you. No problem. Um, <coughs> changes to the district calendar. Yes. So I had a lovely letter that was ready to go. <laughs> and, and we had a snow day. <laughs> Which read that we've had a very mild winter and that we have not used any of our snow days. That letter was written and was going to be delivered yesterday. Well, guess what? We used one of our snow days. So in essence, what um, 
I just want to share with the community and I do uh, have shared with the board is that we potentially have still have three give back days. When we create the calendar, we create, um, we add an additional anywhere between four and five snow days. And we do that because we're always concerned we have to have 180 um, school days. And so we create these calendars with, with what I would call a buffer because we usually use anywhere between two to five snow days. Um, last year was a mild winter. This year we were told it was going to be a terrible, horrible winter and Snowmageddon was coming and it hasn't happened. So uh, I just wanted to let everyone know that we were going to be giving back some days. And uh, it's important, I think, for parents to know that these days could potentially come because some people have um, to take care of their you know, someone to babysit for them. So I'm looking through this paper here because I'm looking for the dates. Um, here it is. So the letter is going to read that if we don't have any snow days between now and March 9th, we will be closed Friday, March 10th. Now, if people are looking at their calendar, March 10th right now is scheduled to be a half-day parent-teacher conference. That day, a half-day parent-teacher conference is gone. We're going to replace that half-day parent-teacher conference with an evening conference. And I think that parents would really appreciate us having an evening conference. So we will have a spring evening conference this year. Not, um, on, not on March 10th. Not right, on March right, right. 10th. Right. So again, if we have no snow days, if we use no snow days between now and March 10th, Friday, March 10th will be closed. If we don't use any snow days between March 13th and April 7th, uh, we'll be closed April 18th. And if we don't use our last remaining snow day by May 25th, school will be closed Tuesday, May 30th. All of this is going to be written in a, in, a letter, in a letter, of course, that I have to modify because the letter started with I was giving four days back. So now we're down to three. And if I don't do this quick enough, I may be down to two. Great. But I think it's important for parents to know. So again, <clears throat> that March 10th date on the calendar that is scheduled to be a half-day parent-teacher conference will no longer be a half-day parent-teacher conference, regardless of what happens. If we don't use it as a day off, then it's a regular day of school for the students. But we will be adding um, two evening uh, parent-teacher conferences, one for the elementary and one for the secondary, and it will all be written in. It'll, it'll be in a nice little letter that I better get out there soon. Otherwise, I'll keep chopping off the days, you know, taking the days out. Will this be posted on the website? It will be posted on the website. We'll put it on Facebook. We're, gonna, we're going to email the parents. And I think that we're going to also, we have a calendar that's posted. We'll put it as an addendum at the bottom of the calendar as well. We want to make sure that parents are aware. Um, and I'm going to ask the building principals to send reminders to the parents. But you mean physical take-home thing or something? We don't do, don't do that anymore. We don't do physical take-home. Did you see Bargoff's face? He, <laughs> he almost <laughs> dropped down. No, we we Eight email hours. everything. Well, I mean, the you board used to get <laughs> packets delivered every Friday in hard copy and by somebody again. who went around on like Pony Express. Do you remember that? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Pony Express? But, <laughs> that's that's not what but, but you know, sometimes people. <laughs> wow. I, I think sometimes. I've been up that's, that's really good. <laughs> no, but I don't think that people realize that in in the last couple of years, we really have changed a lot of the things that we, we did in the past. Yes. Everything, board docs has been revolutionary for us because we no longer make copies. Leah doesn't have to, um, every time something changes, we don't have to duplicate these copies again. And I think that it's really, it's accessible to the community, it's accessible to all of us here. It really has... We've done a lot of good stuff. Yeah. Well, you've who, done a lot of good stuff. Who, br who brought up that board docs idea? That would be Mr. Beeler. <laughs> As a matter of fact, um, <laughs> I believe Elsie and Bargoff have uh, showed it to the town of Monroe, and I believe they, they were impressed with it, and now they're moving See that? to implement it as well. Nice. I think it's it's good stuff. Good. You know what? It, it's I think what that is is that we're listening to one another. And when anybody has a really good idea, we we work on it. And I think that's that's good. I like it. Yes, and sharing with other districts too, as you are 
initiative Daniel will do. Yes. That was that's that's good. That's it for that. That was it. Uh, personnel. <clears throat> sure. Um, <clears throat> I'd ask that the uh, board approve, approve the personnel items as they're listed. We have 19 uh, different items on the agenda tonight, and to kind of piggyback on the conversation about the board docs and the um, ease with making changes, there were a number of changes made to the personnel agenda in the last two days, uh, in particular areas of retirement. Uh, we have nine retirements on the agenda tonight. Four of them were received today. <clears throat> Uh, we have an uh, appointment for one that will take effect uh, February 1st. We have another retirement that will take effect at the end of February. Uh, the others are going to be at the end of the school year. Um, <clears throat> we added them tonight so that we can move forward with the recruiting process for those that will be uh, filled for next year. And the ones, obviously the ones that need to be filled for the balance of this school year. Uh, some of the other items on the agenda are uh, completion of the 52-week probationary period for some of the civil service appointees that were made in uh, the past year. Uh, we also have um, recommendations for coaching and um, uh, intramurals for the, for the spring. Uh, we had to update the substitute pay rates for a couple of categories and the summer uh, worker rates because the minimum wage has increased from nine to nine dollars and seventy cents. We were paying nine dollars, uh, so we had to increase our substitute rates and um, other areas. Um, more to be looked at going forward. <coughs> um, we have a few change of assignments, um, and that's about it. You know, one our staff members whose assignment is being changed is here, Joe Siena who will be the uh, head custodian at uh, the middle school, uh, moving from Smith Clove. So I acknowledge Joe and ask that the board uh, move forward with the recommendations as listed. Uh, any questions or comments? Oh, uh, did you, did you say eight or nine retirees? I'm looking at it. It's uh, eight? I think One, it's two, eight. Three, it eight? is eight. Okay, okay. it is eight. Nine. Eight. Okay. okay. I may have. I'm just checking to make sure All you guys right. are paying attention. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we did. We had four additions today. Any other thoughts? All right. Do we have a motion? Motion. 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 Uh, a second. Do we have a second? Second. You got a second. Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Business and financial, Patrick. Yes, yeah, so uh, I would ask for the approval of the items under business and financial section, which include our standard monthly financial reports, um, one donation, $20 to Pine Tree Elementary School from TerraCycle US LLC. Uh, there's three vehicles, buses, uh, that were going to declare sur surplus or obsolete, um, with mileage ranging from 122000 to 149000 seven contracts, uh, two contracts for related service providers, two contracts for essentially hearing officers, um, one contract for tutoring students in hospital settings, uh, one contract for staff development that Dr. Hassler mentioned, and a contract for a charity basketball game. And finally, there's two resolutions. I had alluded to the uh, emergency capital project <coughs> earlier, authorize us to move forward with that and replace one of the transformers for to our uh, schools, and uh, finally a resolution that would delegate the authority to sign uh, energy, electricity, and gas contracts to the Assistant Superintendent for Business. I had um, mentioned this earlier, we part of a consortium with 25 school districts, and you have to act very quickly when they do a bid for uh, electricity, and recently there was one that was done. So I emailed the board, and I signed. I didn't hear any objections, so I, I signed the contract, but typical move where you delegate the authority to the business official to act and if you notice the resolution has a range of values so I can't lose my mind and agree to something that's outlandish for instance right now we have kilowatt hours I can't there's a ceiling of eight and a half cents per kilowatt hour so we're signing an agreement somewhere around 5.7 cents to 6.1 cents per kilowatt hour so yeah um, any yeah. questions comments uh, do we have a motion? Motion. Second. second. Uh, moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, I just want to ask, Pat, Pat, do you know offhand what is the delivery on the natural gas? It says the ceiling is $3. I just was curious what we do pay delivery right now. Is there a, an average? Um, 
that I think I do have something related to that. No, it's just that. Yeah, just. So the delivery is called basis. So that's the gas right. basis, mm -hmm. and it's um, we're paying somewhere between seventy cents and a dollar seventy-seven okay. as the basis cost. So why? Okay. Right. So the ceiling is three dollars. So. Is it norm? I'm just asking over the course of the of the last year or two years, has it ever gone up to that three dollar range? I'm just. Um, it seems like it's high. If we're seventy cents to a dollar, it just seems like why we. I I think we I think when we renegotiate this, it's going to go up. You know, in other words, we're locked in right now with a fixed rate contract, which is what these are. Right, People right. ask me that. Oh, what if what if the price goes down? Well, it's a risk we take. Right. No. But it's better to you know. It's it, it's better to lock this in and know and have budget certainty. Um, I agree with you. I just was curious where it fell in the range because we're, we're locked in right now at the $3 max. I just didn't know, you know what we were paying. Well, actually, what this is, Chris, it's not what we're locked into. It's I, I don't have the authority to sign a contract that exceeds $3. Okay. So right now we're at, like I said, it's, it's about $0.70 cents at $1.77. That's what our basis is, depending on the account. So there's different accounts, and they have even the electricity. There's... The high school is one type of account, the middle school is another, and everybody, every other building is uh, called an SC2, which is you know, a separate account. So they have different rates. Yeah. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So carried. So I have a uh, motion for the recommendations of the Committee on Special Education and the recommendations of the Committee on Preschool special education that are listed in our agenda as 15.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. Motion. Motion. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Reports by board and central um, administration. Mike? Uh, just congratulations again to all the uh, kids at the uh, national music com competition. Looked like a great time and uh, very impressive. Uh, Kids look day, we're very excited about it, so it's uh, great to see that. Uh, great job on your presentation, Dan. Very nice. And then lastly, I've uh, attended some track and field events. And I think, Laurie, is Laurie Hawk still here? <laughs> um, did somebody break a school record on one of these things? Kristen Lebeski? Swimming. I don't know. She, everybody saw it. Uh, no. Uh, swimming. 300 meter? I don't know. Uh, I, I thought everybody started congratulating that she broke some kind of record. So. He's going to make the break a lot more, to be honest with you. Anyway, that was very <laughs> exciting. So. That's all. Uh, I just want to wish everyone back from the new year. Have a good start to the first year. Uh, I want to wish, I want to congratulate the music and the staff on the, on the great job. Uh, sports, we're doing well in the winter sports. Basketball, girls and boys are doing a phenomenal job. Wish the wrestling team a good, some good luck. I know they have a big match coming up soon. Don? Uh, you said it. Thank you. Suzanne? Yeah, I would like to also congratulate the uh, students who participated in the national music competition and Nikki Reagan. Fantastic job as always, you and your staff. Um, I'd also, this is um, mid year exam week, and I would like to wish all our mm -hmm. students good luck on their exams. And uh, see you next month. Daniel? Uh, again, congratulations to everyone else, Ms. Reagan and the students. Excellent job. Uh, I'm looking forward to see Sophia and Elle, Elle and the other students on February 11th. Uh, looking forward to go to the Red Grammar for our uh, performance. And then also That's tonight. No, oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow? tomorrow? Yeah. No, tomorrow. No, tonight. 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 tonight is at the high school. Tomorrow is at Smith Little. Oh, no. Nah. The family yes. performance is now. Yes. And then uh, at, uh, I'm looking forward on February 3rd to go to, go to the Lower Hudson Valley RIC Women Summit, basically how to implement Google Classroom within the uh, classroom. And then our Instagram account has 278 followers so far, so we're increasing by a large number. Good. Thank you. Leah? Wish everyone a good night. Fired up. This is Reagan. That's that's congratulations and kids. That students. What a great experience for students to visit this historic event. That's that's great. Um, I have a public announcement. Um, if you are a Monroe Woodbury military family, we want to hear from you. Uh, it's a part of the new requirement or new law, um, ESSA. Every student succeed act. And what what the regulation is asking um, all the school district, including us 
to collect the information about the active duty parents. So if you are a um, parent or both parents um, on active duty, you, we would like to hear from you. So you, we, will, we will post this information on our website and, and also we'll send it through our power alert solution. But we would like to hear this um, information from you. Um, it's kind of a data collection requirement. This will actually help um, to form the policy and program decisions based on this unique student population at the local and state level. That's a federal regulation as a part of the ESSA. Um, moving on, because we are implementing this in the middle of the school year, moving on, every summer we'll send out the demographic form and this will be included into the every, when we, when we send out this form. So thank you, Kristen ran there, Carol and Prudence to put it up together and we'll send this to the parents uh, by Friday. Thank you, Eric. Uh, also, quick shout out to Red Grammar. Um, he, he's back in the area. He actually, his son Andy is a Mono Woodbury graduate, Red Grammar's, mm -hmm. and Andy learned to play the trumpet with our music department. It all sort of started all, you know, with, with our kids, which is awesome. Uh, congratulations to Dan on ringing the, the New York Stock Exchange bell. Also, congratulations to FBLA. They had their induction ceremony just before winter break on December 20th. Um, there's a large group of people entering into that organization with a lot of um, I see as uh, students who have a bright future ahead of them, and it's it's a really cool thing. I was at the January 9th CHOP competition at the high school, which was a very, very cool event. Um, congratulations to the music department, certainly. Also, congratulations to our cheerleaders. The same weekend that the music department was in Washington, D.C., our varsity cheerleaders were in Dallas, Texas, for a national competition at which they placed fifth in the nation, which is also very, very impressive. Uh, condolences to the, Debbie Perez, to the family of Debbie Perez. Um, she was definitely a beloved staff member, and she will be missed. Um, Natalie Davidson, who was one of the presenters here tonight, is also an officer at Interact, just to talk about how well-rounded our kids are. Interact is sponsoring a bingo day on February 11th at Valley View Nursing Home, where a large group of our kids from the high school go to Valley View Nursing Home and play bingo with the patients there and give them snacks and, and all kinds of cool things. So it's just a really cool thing to see our kids involved in so many things. North Main Beauty and the Beast is February 11th to February 12th, and Middle School Kaleidoscope Concert is February 14th. Amazing concert. Everybody should attend. Thank you. Thank you. Patrick? Uh, <clears throat> just a couple of things. I was going to say the uh, governor released his uh, executive budget proposal for state aid. It was a little disappointing, but uh, more about that uh, at our next meeting. And typically, that's the initial salvo, you know, right. the negotiation that goes back and forth. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is touch on um, Mrs. Gellich had appeared at uh, a previous board meeting and asked about the senior citizens exemption. And so, um, <coughs> you know, we had a few questions that night. We, the district does offer the senior citizens exemption. We also have the star senior citizen exemption, so you could potentially be eligible as a senior for two exemptions. And she specifically was asking about the district adopting a provision of that whereby the uh, cost associated with medical services and prescription drugs would uh, be a deduct on the calculation, the income for that exemption. So to step back a little bit, the regular senior has a sliding scale based on the income. So it's it, and we've adopted a level where it's it's uh, twenty eight thousand to thirty six thousand four hundred. So you get a fifty percent exemption if your income is less than twenty eight thousand, down to a five percent exemption if you're in like thirty five thousand to thirty six four. So, so in any case, we at the time that uh, she came before the board, we didn't really have a good sense of uh, the impact that that would have on us. So we looked into it. It would be about a hundred thousand dollars annually. Uh, cost and lost revenue, and you know generally uh, exemptions. You exempt one group or one person, and everyone else has to pay a little bit more and pick up the share. So, um, you know, just based on the the tough times and the fact that we already have two existing senior exemptions, I would recommend that we at this time do not adopt that provision. That it. That's it. Yes. Thank you, Harry. <clears throat> well, to go back to the happier. I'd like to uh, yeah. congratulate the, <laughs> the uh, music students and, and the, uh, the staff uh, <clears throat> for their wonderful accomplishments in uh, Washington uh, last weekend. 
Um, we did get a chance to see a, sort of a preview on the 23rd uh, when they presented their holiday concert here. And um, you know, that as any indication of what was accomplished in Washington, uh, certainly we could understand there. Um, <clears throat> the number of awards that they've won. I've also seen that um, clip on Channel 12 over and over and over again because that's the way they run it. Yep. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice to see um, the recognition that the students have gotten. Um, I'm uh, a little familiar with getting awards because on the 23rd of December I also got an award. Um, for the uh, winner of the Ugly Sweater con uh, Contest at the, at the high school. Um, well deserved. Didn't make Channel 12, but you know, it did get some recognition throughout the district. A little more than a sweater. Wait, it was more than, yes, it was more than a sweater. It was an entire suit. Oh my God, I forgot about that. It was terrible. You don't have a sweater and a suit. I didn't know they even Do you want to borrow one next year? I looked them up online. I'm yeah, online. Macy's, seventy-nine dollars. They were on sale. <laughs> Choice blue or red. Oh. I went with the blue. <laughs> and um, on January twenty-fifth, they're about five bucks. I'll go back. I'll, I'll go back and get folding. the red one. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. It, it was a sight to behold. <laughs> yes. There, there are pictures floating around because I've gotten um, some um, in the mail. <laughs> Ooh, um, and then um, I'm surprised <clears throat> I'll be in Washington this weekend um, for the uh, National School Board's uh, uh, equity symposium and Dr. Hassler is going to be joining us too and, and Mr. Kravitz, Kravitz. Mm -hmm. so I think that's remarkable in that Dr. Hassler didn't mention something. He forgot. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm told to be very controlled and student-centered. I, I, I'm told to just stick to the, you know. Good job. Notice I didn't go into my December list. That's good. I did. That's good. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's it for now. Thank you for sharing all of that with us, Harry. Uh, they shared everything, so <laughs> an embarrassment to yes, us all. Yes, Eric stole it. Um, but congratulations, Nikki, and to the students. And I'll pass. Um, same. I just want to congratulate the music department and the cheerleaders, and I want to give a little shout out too to all of the photos that get put up on the website because it's we could really attend something every single day, which is difficult to do, but I love being able to go onto the website and see all the photos that are on there, the videos that are on there. It really does give us a sense of everything that goes on in the community that we can't get to. So thank you. Thank you. Anthony. Uh, congratulations, Dan, on ringing the uh, stock exchange bell. And congratulations, Mrs. Reagan and the students. It was so nice to get a, an email for something that happened in Washington over inauguration weekend that people weren't protesting for or against, that everybody was just happy about. So thank you for that, and good night to everyone. Dan. Uh, congratulations to all the students who participated in the World Strides Festival. Uh, but I also want to congratulate all the music teachers of the district because this is fantastic as a job the high school teachers do. The foundation starts at the elementary level and works its way up. So, you know, from start to finish, they all do a fantastic job. Uh, I want to wish the middle school lead students who are heading to Washington, D.C. at the beginning of next month uh, good luck at their conference. Uh, and uh, I can't believe we're halfway through the school year. So I'm not trying to rush it away, but if we could turn up the heat a little bit, I, I'd be happy. So other than that, good night. Elsie. So you start every meeting with reading our mission statement. And one of the things that I did as you were reading today is I underlined some words. And sometimes people put words on paper and they mean absolutely nothing. But I truly believe that words that you read, which is promote confidence, inspire a passion for learning, and prepare students to become global, become responsible global citizens, are not just words that we put on paper. We live it here. We live it when we look at our teachers, we look at our students, we look at the, these were high school students who got up and spoke so eloquently. I was in awe of them. But there's many of them like that. And I think that we truly have a mission statement that, that speaks to who we are. And I just am always in awe. And I'm so grateful and so thankful. I'm going to get a little emotional, but I'm not. Um, I'm really so thankful for the people that work here because this is a great district. 
And so now I'm going to turn the tables. So I do want to speak about the boundary alteration because this is a beautiful district and we're going to make decisions to keep this district the way that it is. And I just want to make sure that people who are watching this and are listening to us know that this board and this administration is committed to making the right decisions. But here's what we're not going to do. We're not going to rush to a decision because someone gives us an arbitrary date. And I know that it's been said that we have a date of March 1st. That's not true. We are going to reach a decision when we are confident that our decision is what's best for our students. And so I just want to reiterate that because, you know, as I sit here and I look at all the beautiful things that our kids are experiencing, and I wish I was a high school student um, going to Monroe Woodbury because they have such an amazing um, experience here to be able to, to stand at the inauguration, which is so historical. How many of us have been able to do that? But they did it, and they did it because we support them. So I just want to, again, remind everybody that we make decisions on the best interest of our kids and our community, and that's not going to change. And, you know, we don't speak a lot about this, and we don't put letters out there because when there's information to share, we will share. Thank you. <clears throat> um, Don Beeler and I are going to Albany in a little over two weeks, is that right? To, yeah. with the uh, New York State School Boards Association event where um, we have some speakers, but our main task uh, is to meet with our representatives. Um, our legislators and to convince them that the future of our public schools are is worth investing in. Um, you know, there's, there are going to be some strong headwinds um, from a number of quarters in the next few years. And we can fight for what we believe in and what Elsie was talking about as far as our public schools and this public school in particular. So we will be doing that um, up in Albany and Elsie will give us talking points to make sure that we don't, not that we won't go astray, but that we will hit the points that we need to hit in order to continue the state support of our district and all the districts. Um, again, congratulations, Nikki Reagan, all the teachers, everybody, thank you for coming. Here, do I have a, uh, uh, a motion, motion to adjourn the meeting? Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So adjourned. No, let's...